The What's Neat Show is sponsored by Lombard Hobbies, your value hobby shop for over 40 years of modelers helping modelers. Big inventory, value pricing, fast shipping, and great service. And by Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at bachmantrains.com. And thank you for helping us support the best hobby in the world. This is What's Neat for December 2022. I'm your host, Ken Patterson, and this month we do have a good show in that Jennifer Kirk stops by and shares with us some footage of some amazing ride-on trains in the UK in 5-inch gauge and 7.5-inch and gauge. It's a really good segment this month on the show. Dan Michiel comes by the studio and shares with us their new DCC system from TCS. Larry Harrington also shares with us the brand new Easy Command DCC system that's been greatly upgraded and improved. We also look at some brand new models from KR Models, a beautiful GT3 locomotive and a Shea during a photo shoot that I did out here on the property. We've got some amazing drone footage from our drone pilot, Dan Scheidel, in that he exposé some of his best work through the years in this month's video, and it's absolutely awesome to see his segment, Modeling Ideas from Above. Also be sure to check out the What's Neat This Week video podcast that we shoot down here in the studio every Saturday night, keeping you updated on what's new in the hobby with special guests, new products, and a lot of exciting stuff every week in this, the best hobby in the world. And so with that, let's continue on with this December 2022 What's Neat. I'm Jenny Kirk and today I'm going to be talking to you about model railroads in larger gauges and when I say larger gauges I mean something like this and this is truly amazing it's five inch gauge and we've also got seven a quarter inch gauge here now you might be familiar with some of these if you've seen some great locations such as Train Mountain and here in the UK we do have some similar venues and I'm in the county of North Yorkshire at a place called Gilling where they've got a club that runs those large-scale railroads and we're here to take a good look at just how much fun can be had with these super large scales. Now you might be thinking that your yard isn't big enough to accommodate something like this and this is where clubs and venues like Train Mountain are absolutely brilliant because in these gauges they're small enough that you can put them into the trunk of your truck and take them to these locations and have a great day out and at the end of that day you can pack them up and take them home so it really is the best of all worlds so come with me and let's take a great look at large-scale railroading
Large-scale model railroading doesn't have to be just about the prime movers. There's plenty of scope too for the freight cars that run on the track. And you can see here, there's a whole assortment of different freight cars. All of these are UK outline, but it gives you a sense of just what can be achieved in these larger scales. And there's so much fun to be had just switching the cars on these tracks, as well as just just going for a run on the main line and just watching the scenery go by at high speed. Because we have a spare. Oh, right. So if you find a one, we yeah, that. First one. So oh, is it? Oh, it's a film crew. It's in season work. at the yard area and there is so many great wagons on show and it just shows the amount of really great quality workmanship that's gone into all of these from the Great Eastern Railway brake van through all of these private owner coal wagons with the great wealth of colours and also the different designs too. Further along we've got the lime wagons, the three plank wagons, different styles of brake vans, the Stanier brake van, some uh, machine well wagons, press flow cement, and some uh, low fits as well. Such a variety of rolling stock that you can do in this scale. And each one of these is a great project. If you want to tackle these, they are available, some of these as kits. And uh, it's something you can put on your windowsill when not in use, and it's an absolute work of art. Thank you. 
really great day here today and it just shows what these larger scale railroads can really give back. We've seen trains racing on the main line at high speed and we even got a ride round on them and we also saw some switching in the yard too and it just shows there's so much on offer here. It really is a great day out and a great way of taking your hobby up to a larger scale. But until next time, thanks for watching. Take care. Bye for now. For this segment of What's Neat, I'm with Dan Michio from TCS, that's Train Control Systems out in beautiful Philadelphia. And today he's gonna to give us some tips and tricks and show us that brand new DCC system that's come out. And what is it called, Dan? What are you gonna to do today? So what we're talking about today is we're talking about the internal roster settings for your locomotives in the CS-105. That's our command station. Nice. Uh, it's a five amp command station, first generation. So it's CS command station. First generation, that's 105, 5 amps. Nice. Yeah. So what we're talking about is some of the options and settings that you have available to you in the CS-105 for the locomotives that you run on your railroad. The CS-105 contains an internal roster, which allows you to save a bunch of different details and information on the system about your locomotives. And today, we're going to give you some demonstrations on what those options are and how to configure them. So behind me here, I have uh, these RSD-15 alligator locomotives that, if you'll remember from an earlier segment of What's Neat, I helped Ken set up uh, with TCS WOW sound decoders. So we're going to take these same engines and we're going to be using these for a couple of demonstrations in a series of videos that are going to give you the tips and tricks that you really should know about the CS-105. So the very first thing that we want to demonstrate with the system is how to set up uh, more detailed information about these locomotives, such as what they are, you could give them a name, and uh, also we're going to be eventually going into a segment on consisting. So the very first thing that we're going to demonstrate to you is the settings that you're, you have available on the UWT-100. I'll be using this for demonstration purposes. But you can set up these configuration options not only with the UWT-100 or the UWT-50. You can also configure these settings through JMRI if you have the CS-105 connected to a computer. So to get started, I have a locomotive selected here, 9810. That's the very first unit up here. And by going into the menu, which is this button down here, 
and navigating down to option 8, which is settings. I can then go to option 3, which is the roster settings. Now I had already loaded this one in before, but if you're selecting a brand new address that's never been addressed before or you've never changed the settings for recently, it would take about 5 seconds to load in all of the data here. So you can see we have the name as an option. We could add a description about the locomotive. For example, we could give it a information about the decoder. We could say what type of locomotive it is. Below that we have speed step mode where you can change the speed steps between either 28 or 128 speed steps. This function will be discussed in a future video on how the behavior of function zero behaves. And five for functions gives you an option to name your functions for your locomotive. You may find this familiar if you use JMRI where you have information that will display as to what each function is. So if you push a button it would display on the throttle or in the function help as to what that does. And again we'll be talking about that in a future video. We also have the option to delete the entry from the roster if you get rid of your locomotive and you have no use for it anymore. So going back up to the top we'll start with giving the train a name. So instead of just having a DCC address 9810 in this case, we could give this locomotive a name. We could call it Jerry or Tom, or we could call it something more akin to what the actual locomotive is. So I could call it RSD15 Santa Fe number 9810, for example. And that's what I'll do. So to save the time, we're going to make a quick cut here until that's all entered in, and then we'll come right back. Now through the magic of video editing, we have our name entered in for the locomotive. So like I said, RSD15 Santa Fe number 9810. If I'm happy with that, I can push the save button and now we return back here to the menu where I now have other options. If I escape out of the menu again and reselect that locomotive 9810 and so now you can see that we have the name of the locomotive RSD15 Santa Fe number 9810 selected. And that is how you add a name to your locomotive in the roster settings for the CS105.
For this segment of What's Neat, I haven't done this in a long time in that I only do a few photo shoots a year, it seems like, outdoors uh, in the last few years. But I'm shooting some amazing models from a company called krmodels.net. And what these are, this is the first model that Keith Revel has introduced to the US market. His company has created this beautiful two-truck Shea locomotive 
which I am doing some outdoor photography with in the past couple of days. This model runs like a dream. It's got full sound and it's just a very beautiful two truck Shea. I photographed this outside in a really nice photo shoot. Let me show you how the photo came out as I shot this model from both sides, stacking the scenery and using the mountainous and the pine trees in the background for a really nice conceptual photograph of what this model would look like running on your layout. The other model that I'm shooting today is really unusual. This is a GT3. This model ran in the UK. And this is an absolutely amazing model in that it looks like a steam engine, but in fact, it's a turbine. This is powered by what sounds like a jet locomotive, a jet engine, when it starts up and it starts running down your layout. It's got full sound in it. Both of these models come with low sound. I also shot this GT3 or this GT3 outside. Let me show you with you the photograph that I got from that. This model looks absolutely exquisite in real sunlight. And that, again, this thing runs smooth. It runs like a dream. And so this was just something that I wanted to share with you as I do these photo shoots of these models over the past couple of days. I thought they were very interesting. Jeff Schultz suggested that I share these models with the viewers of What's Neat because again, they're fascinating models from krmodels.net. Check out their website. There's a lot of amazing locomotives that Keith is producing right now for the market, for us in this, the best hobby in the world. So with that, that is this quick segment for What's Neat. For this segment of What's Neat, I've got Larry Harrington from beautiful Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, from Bachman Industries. And Larry, you're going to talk about something really new and exciting, and that's the brand new Bachman Easy Command DCC system that you guys have just upgraded and changed. Yep, that's correct, Ken. We, um, 2005, we came out with the original Easy Command. Um, since then, we've made, I don't know, tens of thousands, maybe a hundred thousands of units um, included as a separate sale item. We've also sold locomotives paired up with it. Um, we've had in any of our sound, sound sets that we've sold in the last few years have included the uh, Easy Command in it as well. Um, the whole objective is to get the model railroader started in DCC. And um, when we did it back in 2005, DCC was pretty new to a lot of people and very complicated. And so we made the system as we call it, easy command, so it's uh, simple to operate. Um, you know, this was the original easy command unit that we had. Yes. Um, I'm sure you see these all over the place. And we've upgraded the newer version. So this is the easy command plus. It still looks very similar. Um, it has a lot of neat new features that I'll go over. And uh, just, to, just to get, we've gone into the you know, 21st century here so that we could... Um, you know, like I said, when DCC first started, it basically was just to con control more than one locomotive on the track. There wasn't a whole lot of sound systems out there, but now, um, as you know, there are so many features on these locomotives, uh, lighting features, sound features. You need to be able to control all of those. Yes. And the original Easy Command only had a couple of um, function buttons, so the um, new version allows you to support all 28 um, versions, all 28 of the function buttons. So right now I'm in um, showing you how basically we have the, the function key is still on the unit like it used to be, but it has like three pages, we call them. So you press it once and you're in the first page, which would be function zero through function nine. Okay. The light turns green and then you do it a second time and you're in page two, which will be function 19 through I um, mean, function 10, excuse me, through. Hold that up about two inches higher. There you go. We can see it. Okay. I did. Yeah, I can see myself better on <laughs> <laughs> You think I know how to do this by now. But anyway, you press it the third time and you're in your third page. So you can get all 28. It turns green. So it, it has a little color code on the um, top of the unit there that tells you which, you know, which version it is, first, second, or third page. Very nice. Um, another neat feature you might notice that it has a, um, let me... I have a locomotive on the track here down, so I have to watch what I'm doing. Let me change it to a different address. So, address two, there's nothing on that address. 
So we have a little speed indicator now, as you see. The oh, the, nice. Yeah, you know, so you can. This is 128 speed steps now as well. So you can finally tune the the speed. And the one other difference on this is that the original one had a, a knob that would just go like um, 315 degrees and it would stop. Okay. This, this one you can keep going around and around and around and around until you get to the speed that you want to be and you can back off as well. Um, and then as you can see, the indicator is going up and down. Yes. Um, and it remembers that. So if you go to a different locomotive, like number one, you see now it went down to zero because there's the locomotive one is at rest right now. So, okay. Um, so you can control multiple locomotives up to, um, we, we've set this originally like the original Easy Command so it can control one analog um, locomotive on address zero. And then you can do one through eight with full control of your locomotive for DCC with all the like all the function keys and all that. And function nine, I mean, excuse me, address nine is reserved for turnouts. But if you don't have any turnouts on your lab, you can also use function nine um, to control an additional locomotive um, as well. Very so cool. I, I'm, I'm sure many of your viewers are familiar with the easy command, but I can take you through its uh, paces here um, as well with a couple locomotives I can show you what it can do. Um, also, one other feature that we added to this was um, the original, it still has the emergency stop, which when you press the emergency stop, that cuts all power to your, your layout and shuts down everything. Okay. Um, the new version, in addition to that emergency stop, has an e-stop for your locomotive. So if you're running a locomotive and you see, oh, that one's going astray and I have to stop it, all you have to do is simply press down on the button and that stops just that locomotive. Wow. So you rest, the rest of your locomotives, if you're running with uh, other people in a session, you're not affecting their locomotives as well as yours. So you're, you're, you know, you're, whatever the active locomotive is, that controls the e-stop on that. Okay. Um, this is backwardly compatible to the previous accessories that we had for the Easy Command. We had an Easy Command companion, which you could plug up to three additional ones in with patch panels and have all the people... Um, operating the, their locomotives. The only limitation is there that only has the, the function buttons that were supported on the easy com command, command companion. So you know, you, this is the master brains that controls all the functions and um, it, it has, you know, like I said, full control with all function keys for the locomotives. So, um, wow. so I, can, I can show you a few things what it can do. So I'm going to show you how to um, control the, the, the locomotives. I have two locomotives on the track down here. Okay. I tilt down my, um, can you see the tracks there now? Yes, I can. Okay, so first thing I want to show you is that you can do um, turnouts um, on, func on address number nine. I can, can you see the points on the, on the crossover where? I, right the crossover closest to the tracks, um, we don't see the points exactly. Just a no, little no, bit. No, uh, no better or worse. Is it a, is a way to turn the camera a little bit towards the points? There you go. Good job. Okay. All right, and here we go. We're going to turn the. Uh, nice. So I'm controlling that with the easy command on function number three. You can you can do one through eight for the functions. When you program, that's a different time and place to show you that. There's a command. There's a video on our um, website that shows you how to program on a YouTube channel how to do the easy command switches. So Very cool. That, but that just you know shows you can control the switches. And now I'm going to turn this back over here and I'm going to fire up this um, locomotive that I have here, the Alco FA1, FA2, excuse me. Um, that's on address three. Okay. And I'll show you, it, you know, as the um, the controller lights up on three, when I go into function mode, you see the, the three flashes. That's indicating the on the, um, the locomotive address number you're controlling. But any of the illuminated keys are the functions that are active. And you notice I have number eight, I'm um, because I muted the locomotives before we started this interview. So if I turn that off now. Now you get the um, sounds of the FA1, FA2. Okay. And 
then I can actually start up the locomotive. And this is the SD40 that I'm controlling right now. Boost that up. We can go over to the FA1 and get that pulled out. Wow. So as you can see, you have full control of all the functions, all the sounds. I'll turn those off for now so we can talk again. No, that's but, um, very cool. So basically, you know, with our last couple of locomotives that we've made, the ACS-64 and the Charger, they've had so many sound functions on them and lighting functions that we use just about all of the 28 function buttons um, to control something or other. Okay. Turning lights on, turning sounds on. Um, and, you know, we ran out of uh, basically the way to do it on the easy command. We've incorpor we incorporated some special programming on those particular decoders so that you could uh, page um, by pressing function 8 on the old easy command, but you don't need to do that anymore. You can just go directly to the function that you want to control um, on the, the easy command plus. So, um, this, this, like I said, is back really compatible with the other accessories. It's a great way to get started. And then going forward, our sound sets will have, I'll start to include this in instead of the Easy Command Plus instead of the previous version of the Easy Command. So you're getting a really good value there. So, No, way to go. It's, it's a great system. It's well thought out. The way you've changed things is amazing. Yeah, we kept it very familiar looking too. So if you're used to the old one, it'll only take a few minutes to get used to this. That's awesome, Larry. Well, that's perfect for Christmas sales. That's something to think about for getting. Yeah, they're, they're in stock now, so you know, go visit your, your favorite dealer and pick one up. That is awesome, Larry. Well, I want to thank you very much for helping uh, produce this segment of What's Neat. It's always interesting the products that you feature on this show. I appreciate it so much. We all love it. No problem, Ken. I'm glad to be here. All right, Larry. With that, that is this segment for What's Neat. Thanks. All of the products seen on this episode of What's Neat are available from Lombard Hobbies in Lombard, Illinois, or order online at LombardHobby.com. Bachman Trains. Now that's the way to run a railroad. Check out their website at BachmanTrains.com.